welcome back to the lecture number 4 of this week uh, last week we stopped uh, sorry last lecture we stopped at differential manometers this was the slide that we were going to talk about we saw some um, devices that can be used to measure pressures one of them was manometers in which a standard manometer and a differential manometer. So, we are actually going, going to write down an equation or you can call it as a numerical as well. So, this is the setup you know uh, the blue one is the this this liquid here is water and this is mercury. So, we need to find out the drop in pressure between points 1 and 2. Okay. So, how are we going to approach this problem? So, where if you see this is an orifice correct. So, now we are actually going to keep this figure in a small and just write down start writing down the equations variation with pressure. If we go down we are going to add the pressure, if we are going up we are going to subtract that pressure. So, firstly P 1 this is P 1 here plus H 1 gamma W. So, what we are we are traversing around this direction okay? H 1 gamma W because this is water minus h2. So, if we traverse around this direction and reach this point, okay, so minus h2 into gamma hg again we are traversing across the water. So, minus h3 gamma w should be equal to p2 very very simple equation correct. So, we can write we can bring p1 here p2 here and we can write P1 minus P2 is equal to as written here, right? H3 minus H1 gamma W plus H2 gamma Hg. Or we can also write P1 minus P2, H3 minus H1 is what? If you see, H3 minus H1 or minus of H1 minus H3 will be H2, right? So, this can be written as minus H 2 this this term here. So, it will be H 2 can be taken out and we can write P 1 minus P 2 is equal to H 2 gamma H G minus gamma water and this is the pressure difference very very simple question on differential manometers and this is how it works. Okay? Nice. So, this concludes my first part where the pressure variation with location was there uh, pressure at a point. So, we are going to solve some questions also and this is quite important. So, what we say we have a 6 meter deep tank. So, this is 6 meter right and contains 4 meters of water. So, this is as, as it is written here very clear 4 meter and 2 meter of oil of relative density 0.88. So, we have an oil the relative density is 0.88. We have to determine the pressure at the bottom of the tank. Okay. So, for your convenience we have drawn the pressure variation here on this side okay. this. Okay. So, how are we going to this is a question that generally people do it for before I mean you know engineering starts or you must also have done it in a fluid mechanics class. So, now we are going to approach this and as always what I am going to do is I am going to use a white screen. So, we have already seen this equation. So, I will just draw the pressure prism. or cannot should not call it pressure prism but yes. So, this is P 2 right the entire thing here this is 2 meters okay. so that you remember pressure at atmospheric is 0 this is 4 meters 
okay, and if this is P3, we need to find this, correct. So, these are all the information that we have. So, first, see steps are very important. So, you must be noting it down. First, determine the pressure while water interface, right, that is P2. <coughs> so, P2 is written as P1 plus pressure due to 2 meter of oil, very nice. So, or P1 plus what is the pressure due to 2 meters of oil? Gamma naught into 2, correct. Here P1 is equal to 0, right. Whereas, gamma naught which is the pressure of the oil, it is 0 0.8 its specific gravity into 9790 that is 8615.2 Newton per meter square and uh, Newton per meter cube sorry, because this yeah. So, P2 can be written as 8615 0.2 into 2 that gives us 172.30.4 Newton per meter square. So, you do not have to be very specific about 9790, you can also assume 9.8, so 9800, it is just uh, what I have assumed. Okay. So, <laughs> that is the first step. Now, we must also determine P3, right. Gamma W is we have assumed 9790 Newton per meter cube. Okay, yeah. So P3 will be P2 plus pressure due to 4 meters of water, right? So P2 we already know, correct? So P2 value. P2 is what we have found out was 17230.4 plus pressure due to 4 meters of water is going to be 4 into 9790. Okay, that gives us 5690.4 Newton per meter square or P3 can be written as 56.39 kilo Pascal. Okay. So, this was what the question uh, had asked to calculate P2 and P3. If we go just go back, you know, if we so determine the pressure at the bottom of the tank. So, bottom of the tank was P3, and that is exactly what we have found out. So, the answer was P3 is equal to 56.39 kilo Pascal. Okay. So, maybe yeah. Hmm. All right. So, I have one another problem for you before we uh, go to the next concept and that is we have shown a manometer here in this figure. We have to calculate the pressure difference between points M and N. This is point M and this is point N. The best way as I told you before, if you want to calculate the pressure difference or pressure at that point, you have to start at one point where the pressure is known and traverse to uh, the other point where you have to calculate the pressure. If you go up, you have to subtract that pressure. If you go down, you have to add that pressure. So, <coughs> that is the one of the ways. Here, what we are going to do, we are going to equate the pressure at this level. Okay? So, I think you must uh, be drawing this uh, uh, figure because I would not be redrawing it now. 
So, but what I am going to do is I am going to use that another white sheet to be able to solve this problem. Good. So, as I already told you we have to equate. So, equating the pressures at both <coughs> the limbs as I told you while discussing the figure along the horizontal plane and what is that plane x x ok. So, P m minus gamma w 0 0.06 plus 0 0.035 will give us P n minus gamma w 0 0.12 plus 0 0.06 minus gamma naught into 0 0.035. So, here gamma no, gamma w is unit weight of water which is equal to 9790 Newton per meter cube and this value has been assumed ok, because this is a standard value what is gamma naught is unit weight of oil what is it going to be any guesses the specific density was 0 0.83 into 9790 specific gravity when we say it is always a density that is in ratio with water no other fluid ok. So, that is why this the density of I mean unit weight of water is what we multiply to the specific gravity to get the uh, unit weight of that oil. So, here it comes out to be 8125.7 Newton per meter cube. So, if we use these two values in equation here what we are going to get P m minus p n is equal to 9790 into 0 0.095 minus 9790.0.18 into 0 0.18 minus 8125.7 into 0 0.035 and this is going to give us minus 1116.5 Newton per meter square or minus 1.1165 kilo Pascal. I mean we do not have to be very you know where we can simply write 1.12 also minus 1.12 kilo Pascal ok. So, the answer is going to be because it is negative that means pressure at N is larger than at M by 1.12 kilo Pascal simple. So, the calculation of you know the pressure things is not that difficult. If you follow the chain rule uh, keep writing the pressure while going up and down this is very 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 simple. Great, so now we go back and this we have solved this problem now. So, <coughs> this is fluid statics 2. Uh, I mean I call it 2 because we are going to do the surface forces and body forces. Uh, therefore, uh, we need to know what are we going to study in fluid statics 2. So, in statics 2 it is static surface forces we are going to see force on plane areas ok. 
we are going to see force on curved surfaces like this. So, this is plane areas, this is plane, this is curved surface and we also will see the buoyant force a very small uh, uh, detail of it, but I think this is very necessary. So, um, I mean if we are teaching basics of fluid mechanics in this course in the beginning, so buoyancy is an important concept that everybody must be aware of. Good. So, <coughs> we have to see what are the forces on plane areas that is horizontal surface. So, <coughs> if you see this is a figure that shows you know a horizontal surface at depth h. Okay. So, this h is the vertical distance to free surface and this we what is the p here okay. and what is the resultant force at the bottom. Okay. <coughs> and P we are assuming 500 kilo Pascals here okay. that we are going to see. So, what is the force on the bottom of this tank of water actually what is the net force on the bottom of this tank. So, the force resultant force is going to be the integration of pressure into area. So, P is constant. So, it comes out and that becomes pressure into area P A, where P is rho G H. Okay. This is the gauge pressure. So, F R will become rho G H into A. H A is the volume area into height that is the volume. right? So, F R is actually nothing but the weight of the overlying fluid. Okay. <coughs> also, F is normal to the surface and towards the surface if P is positive. Okay. F passes through the centroid of the area, this is an important uh, information for you <coughs> and therefore, the change in pressure can be equated to rho into A. Okay or we can write in x direction minus del delta p by delta x is equal to rho a x. Right? So, there is no acceleration in x direction here and that is equal to 0, there is no pressure variation in x direction, whatever there is it is in z direction. Good. Another important thing is we have to learn or revise again what are the forces on the plane areas or the inclined surface. So, this has to be taken in a little bit of more detail. What will be the direction of the force? Always perpendicular normal to the plane. right? <coughs> so, the force will start acting like this correct. What will be the magnitude of the force? We have to integrate the pressure over the entire area. Here the pressure is no longer constant at the because it is not uh, it is not at one elevation it is varying see the h is changing here here it is different here it is different here it is different. So, yeah what is the line of the action? So, for to find the line of action we have to do the moment of the resultant force must be equal to the moment of the distributed pressure force we have to do the moment balance to find the line of action we will see soon how are we going to tackle that. So, I will just erase all ink on this slide good. <coughs> so, <coughs> forces on plane areas. So, this has been taken actually from Monsoon Young and Okishi uh, the derivation. So, but uh, I think I will explain one by one what those things are. So, the question the biggest question is we have to determine the location direction and magnitude of the resultant force acting on one side of this area due to the liquid in contact with water. If you see the, the body, I okay, will just erase because this was just to you know. Okay. All right. What we say let the plane in which the surface lies intersect the free surface. So, this is the free surface here okay. 
and let the plane in which the surface lies the body intersect at point O ok, right. Good and let this make an angle theta with the surface, right. The x y coordinate system is defined such that O is the origin. So, this is also the origin you know and the x axis is directed along the surface as shown. So, this is x axis ok sorry this is x axis and this is y axis good. So, this is just explaining you and we are going to look at the individual terms when we describe those. You see many things here centroid, location of cent resultant forces, you see this F r, you see d f, but we will come to it one by one. Good. So, what I have done is I have kept this image on the left side and now we are going to. So, for any depth h, okay, let us we say that the force acting on an area d a will be because it is at depth h d f will be pressure into area right gamma h d a. This is the d f this is perpendicular to the surface that is very important. So, to find out the resultant force what should we do? We do gamma h d a integrated over the entire area right. H here if we start if we try to write down write it down in terms of y this can be related to theta as h is y sin theta and gamma is gamma and d a is d a ok. So, f r can be written as gamma sin theta can come out and this is y d a ok integral of y d a. More very important if you remember from your earlier classes, this is first moment of inertia and this integral y d a can be written as y c into a where y c is the location of the centroid of the object right and f r can be written as gamma a y c sin theta. So, now you know gamma you know a you know sin theta and for a particular object you also know y c the centroid location right where y, y c is the coordinate of the centroid of the area a measured from x axis which passes through o. So, orientation you have to be very careful about ok. I will just erase all the ink now. So, or we can also say gamma a from here and y c sin theta. What is y c sin theta? This is y c right. y c sin theta can be written as h c. h c is the height of the centroid from the free surface. So, h c is the vertical distance from fluid surface to the centroid of the area. Now, we have actually simplified into very common I mean very simple equation. I will erase. So, I will just write the important one. So, this is the important one f r is equal to gamma a h c. This is one important result to note down at this point in time. Very good. So, we proceed to the next slide. Okay. So, this equation of f r suggests that the magnitude of the resultant force is equal to the pressure at the centroid multiplied by total area as you have seen here. See pressure gamma a multiplied by the total area right. F r also must be perpendicular to the surface that is very important. And the reason is since all the differential forces were perpendicular that we have counted. If you see all the forces these were all perpendicular. So, this is let us say d f 1, d f 2, d f 3. So, if you add this the sum can change, but not the direction right. The point through which the resultant force acts is called the center of pressure. This is you might have heard uh, in your fluid mechanics class what calculate the center of pressure. So, this is what the center of pressure is a quick revision for you again. The center of pressure is not at the centroid and what is the reason? Because the pressure is increasing with depth 
that is important again another important result to note down. Okay? We have seen the resultant force value and we have discussed uh, some of the properties of resultant force. Now, we must also be able to find out what corresponding x r and y r is. So, let us say <coughs> there is the, the, the one of the coordinates in y direction for the center of pressure, centroid is here, this is center of pressure, right, is y r which is not equal to y c. Good. Okay. In that particular case, what we are going to do is coordinate y r can be determined by summation of moment around x axis. So, for finding y r the mo mo moment uh, equilibrium should be done around x axis. So, the way we do it y r f r. So, see y r into f r. So, this is y r into f r this will be equal to <coughs> integral y df right so what is y df so this is df and this is y so all the summation is beginning from here until here all the small small dfs that is there so that will be y can be written as uh, sorry df can be written as gamma sin theta y da Correct, this we have already seen in the previous slide. This is the sum of the moment where fr was gamma a y c sin theta that we have seen before. So, y r now can be written as integral y square d a divided by y c into a. I will erase the ink. So, you can see integral y square d a. Okay divided by y c into a because gamma sin theta gamma sin theta cancels right. So, this is actually the second moment of inertia with respect to the x axis <coughs> very good. So, we are coming at some uh, conclusions now where y r can be written as i x second moment of inertia correct. Now, if we use the parallel axis theorem, so because see this is around an x axis which is not fully independent of the coordinate center right system, but if we have a coordinate system passing through the centroid of the object, then we are able to you know calculate very easily does not matter how do we orient our uh, coordinate system. So, using parallel axis theorem i x can be written as i x c plus a y c square very simple that uh, this, this, this you have read before as well. So, i x c is the second moment of inertia with respect to an axis passing through the centroid and parallel to x axis. Therefore, the equation of y r can be written as y c is the centroid plus i x c divided by y c into a i x c is known y c is known and a is known right. So, this is an important uh, let me. So, this is the important equation again. So, y r is y c plus i x c divided by y c into a. If you remember this equation you will always be able to find out uh, the <coughs> Mm, uh, the center of pressure coordinate y r. So, we also need to find out x r. Uh, what is the logical way? We will do the summation of moment around y axis now. So, for x r we need to do the moment calculation around y axis. So, around this axis. How? See x r into f r. Where is x r? This is x r. So, x r into f r okay? because yeah is equal to integral x d f. So, d f we already know. So, it is gamma sin theta y d a <coughs> right and this is sum of the moment we know f r is this one gamma a y c sin theta. Therefore, x r will come out to be integral x y d a divided by y c a. And this is the product of inertia i x y with respect to the x and y axis. 
therefore x r can be written as i x y divided by y c into a. Again the same thing happens that we need to translate this uh, mom, uh, moment of inertia or product of inertia i x y with respect to the centroid. So, that it becomes independent of that particular coordinate system. So, we can write if this is i x y okay, and i x y c can be written as i x y is equal to i x y at centroid plus a y c x c. If we put this in this equation here i x y c is the product of inertia with respect to an orthogonal coordinate system passing through the centroid. And therefore, x r can be written as x c plus i x y c divided by y c into a. So, this is x c here what it comes. So, <coughs> so, this is an important result here. This is good. Another important result for we have obtained y r and x r. Now, the center of pressure sum if the submerged area is symmetrical with respect to axis passing through centroid and parallel to either x or y axis, the resultant force must pass along the x is equal to x c since a x y is identically 0. See, if the submerged area is symmetrical with respect to axis passing through the centroid, then i x y is identically 0. So, x r will be 0. Now, as the y c increases, the center of the y coordinate of the centroid increases, center of pressure moves closer to the centroid of the area. Very, very it is easy to see from the equation that uh, y uh, r was y c plus, you know. So, if y c is too large, then does not matter what the other term is. Since y c is equal to h c by sin theta, y c will increase if depth of submergence h c increases or for a given depth the area is rotated such that an angle theta decreases. This is very obvious from this particular equation. So, now there are some properties of area which you will be supplied with. This is very easy to you know hand on you do not need to remember some other with this slide if you have. So, area in this particular rectangle area is a b depth of the centroid is a by 2 i x c is b a cube by 12. So, this is symmetric about the centroid right. So, i x y c is 0 where i x c by a is a square by 12 I mean you, you can just simply see. Similarly, for this triangle uh, <coughs> isosceles triangle this is for circle I think you can you know uh, note it down these figures are quite important the circle for example, even objects like this because in fluid in hydraulics you will encounter structures like this having this type of gate. Ellipse is also important so area is pi a b y c is a i x c is pi b a cube by 4 i x y c is 0 because it is also symmetric around the centroid. Similarly, this here so this the y c is 4 r by 3 pi this value is important because we are going to use it because the most of the gates that are used in hydraulics uh, have these type of openings we will come and we will see in this type of you know <coughs> thing. So, this is the probably the last so, uh, of this lecture. I would want to each and every one of you this is a very, very basic question which I have taken uh, from an English author. Location of average pressure versus line of action. So, we will in we will see in practice uh, how this moment and those things are calculated with the help of these blocks. <coughs> this is quite uh, uh, easy to understand. So, my question is what is the average depth of the blocks? Anyone? Tell me what is the average depth? So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, what is the average depth? 3, right. Where does this average occur? Tell me where is this average occurring? The depth? Tell me. So, it is happening at see at 5 are you able to get this right see this is correct see the max most number of uh, the block number 3 is at 5 you know 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, if you do take the depth. Now, the most important where is the resultant actually? How are you able to find this resultant? We will use moment balance here. So, correct. So, what we are going to do? We are going to do y r into f r resultant force is equal to 1 meter. So, this is 1 meter. How many blocks are there? Tell me 4 blocks plus see 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Now, 8 blocks into 3 meters, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 into 3 meters. Now, we have 12 blocks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 blocks that one. Similarly, we have 16 blocks, we have 20 blocks. And if we do this summation, so yr fr is equal to 380 meter blocks. Okay? And therefore, 380 meter blocks and the total number of blocks is 60 blocks. So, we divide and we see yr will be 6.33 meters. <coughs> so, this is quite an intriguing example where you can practice that on your own. And if you do not if you do not understand, we will explain that in the uh, forum if you please raise your questions there. That is good. So, now I will end this particular lecture and we will proceed to the last lecture of our this week, which is continuation of fluid statics, where we will see some more examples and how the forces on the surfaces is calculated more. Great. See you.